Guys, okay, I wanted to share a story with you. So I've been out um, doing errands all day, just getting last minute Christmas items and groceries and all that, and um, haven't eaten all day, probably pushed my body longer than it needed to go, and just want to get home. And I come out of, I live, okay, I live in an area where, um, there's not many homeless people, so running into one is very, uh, n not a regular thing. And I'm walking out of Walmart to my car, and, um, this lady came up to me and she said that she's looking for donations for, to feed her family for a meal for, um, Subway. And I said I didn't have any money because I didn't. Um, and I wasn't going to take her back to my car. Um, and so I, I left and went in the car and then I remembered I have, I keep $20 in my, um, my purse just for people who need it, situations like that. But I don't carry my purse around. I leave it in the car. Um, and I remembered I had that. So when I had to pick up, I was in Walmart getting some stuff and then I had to pick up the groceries from Walmart. So, um, I go and I park and I'm sitting there and I'm still thinking about this lady and I look in my pocket and there's $6 in my pocket. So I'm like, okay, Lord, if you want me to help her out, bring her over here and I'll give her the $26. Um, and so the food comes, gets delivered and still thinking about this lady and I'm pulling out and there's Subway. Subway's in Walmart. I guess I just never pay attention. Um, that's what she was talking about. And so I'm pulling out. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to go look the parking lot over for her, but if she comes across my path, I will give her the money. Well, lo and behold, she started to cross right in front of me. So I rolled down the window. I'm like, Hey, look, how about I meet you at Subway? And, um, she said she was like super hesitant so I was a little leery because I don't I don't personally like giving money I want to but but I don't want them to you know if they're homeless or not I don't want them to go use my money for drugs or weed or uh, alcohol or whatever so um, I'd rather buy her the food so I went she went to uh, subway and I go park and um, I'm just praying the whole time, like, Lord, give me the words, because I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say, I, I don't talk, to, I'm not a talker to people I don't know, um, so it doesn't, doesn't come natural for me, but, so I go inside, and, and I ask her how old the kids are, because I had asked her how many people she needed to feed before she went into Subway, she's like a four-year-old and a six-year-old, and come to find out these kids were in the car, and I asked her how she got the situation, and it, it was um, disagreements in um, family and whatever. And so I'm saying there, while she orders, she ordered a foot long, and she was going to cut it up into three. And I said, no, we're going to get three foot longs because I, I know how much kids eat, and she doesn't have anywhere to eat, and she doesn't have anywhere to prepare a meal at. And it's cold here. It'll last in the car. It'll be fine. So she gets two foot longs and, um, some chips and stuff. And we're talking a little bit and I asked her if she knows Jesus. And, um, she's like, yeah, my pastor was, my father was a pastor and he died a couple years ago, um, at this church locally. And, um, so she's like, yeah, I know Jesus. And, um, so we were talking a little bit and then I, I put my card in to pay and it's $26. And so I was like, uh, before you leave, I want to pray, pray over you. So we went over to the side and I prayed for her and, um, her name is Sandra and I prayed for her and her family and, um, just whatever the Lord laid on my heart to pray for. And, um, it was the Holy Spirit was like, I got a warm, like, I, like I've said before, lots of people get goosebumps when they feel the Holy Spirit. I get warm. And so I felt the Holy Spirit and it was evident to me that she did too, because she was bawling. And, um, 
this sounds weird, but I told her I loved her, but that love wasn't me. That love was, I'm going to see you again, and this is only temporary, and, um, and that is the love of the Father that I'm speaking to you. So um, I, I left, went out to my car, um, Buster, and um, I looked up 26 on Strong's Concordance. It's agape love. And I thought, how good is God? Like, it's just so overwhelming sometimes how good he is. And the fact I'm just so humbled that he chose to use me to some perfect stranger. And who knows who is watching. I know the lady at Subway kind of figured out the situation. She could hear a conversation. But it was evident that we were praying in the corner. And... I don't know if anyone saw it. I don't know if it was just for her. But I know what it did for me. And for me to take time out of my day that I wanted to go home and eat so badly was a sacrifice. And that $26 was a sacrifice. But how much more am I giving with that blessing? It, I wasn't doing it for myself. I wasn't doing it to say, hey, look what I did. I was doing it because I was I was told to do it. I didn't know the outcome. I didn't know if if she really was homeless. I don't know. I don't know anything. All I know is what was presented to me. And I know now that person and her family that I never knew before. And now I can pray for her and her family. And, um... I was just thinking and, and just mulling over it and um, it could have been anybody. It could, very well could have been somebody who has, who's, who's angry at God or who is completely, has thrown God out the window. This was a fellow sister in Christ who needed to be lifted up. And I was just thinking of how many more sisters and brothers need to be lifted up right now because Satan is attacking us specifically hardcore because we're the ones fighting if you're not fighting then you know where you're at right now um and just the the callousness of where we have become as a society and I was praying earlier for us just for the Lord to just peel or pick away those calluses so that we can have pure bleeding hearts again for each other and um, for the lost. And there's just, I mean, obviously it's a pretty bad time to be homeless, but I know that other people are in that same situation and there's going to be a whole lot more that are in that situation. And the, the thing that before I, I talked to her, the verse that ran through my head was you might, I don't remember the exact, I don't have my Bible with me. I normally do, but, um, it's you, the entertaining angels unaware. She could very well have been an angel for all I know. She called me an angel. So I don't know, but, um, I I get all like jacked up on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> like I don't get jacked up on Mountain Dew. I get jacked up on the Holy Spirit. So every time stuff like that happens and I get just so humbled that he would want to use me and even just take the time to use me just like that little old me. Like who am I? I'm a I'm a stay-at-home mom and that's my job. And he, he reminded me, as though, these are the kind of people he wants to use. He wants to use little old you. He wants to use a nobody. That's who he wants. He doesn't, he doesn't want the people who are saying, hey, look what I did. I, look at all these things that I have done. He doesn't want those people. He wants the humble people that just like the stay-at-home moms. Just like the guy working the computer next to you. He wants to use the nobodies. 
Nobody in the Bible was a somebody before he used them as a nobody. So if you haven't found your calling yet, just keep praying and do stuff like that. Take a leap of faith because your faith is never going to grow unless you exercise it, just like any other gifts of the Spirit. It will never grow. It's a muscle. It'll never grow unless you use it. Take that leap of faith and use it because next time something might be that something might be harder to do than the last one. And if you haven't exercised that muscle, you're probably not going to succeed or you're going to completely miss it altogether. So anyway, I was talking to a guy in the, in the produce section about blueberries for like three minutes and I was trying, I was waiting on God to say something. I wasn't going to be like, see, these blueberries are made in Peru. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I was, it was funny that this happened right at the end of the day and I've been waiting all day long for an opportunity and that it happened right the last minute of my day. The, the, the part of the day where I was less willing to sacrifice the most. And I think that's what really God wants and, and is looking for. So I hope that encourages somebody. It's very encouraging to me anyways. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great Christmas week. Don't stress out too much. And um, I hope you eat a lot of food.